our 4th of July has never looked so diverse. There is already gunfire happening off in the distance. As you can see, we really were not kidding that this city is Mexican. But that's fitting considering the cultural melting pot that is the United States of America. Here's how we celebrated America's birthday. After several hours of driving, we've arrived on the other side of the state to a region known as Palouse. Yes, long and amazing drive, but only I know because everyone else slept most of the time. That is true. And it's a good thing that he slept at least. He actually was a really good passenger for that really long car ride. I'm sure you're all wondering why are we in Colfax, Washington, which you've never heard of. It's because it's in a region called Palouse, which is very gorgeous. It's shared between Washington and Idaho on the very eastern side of the state. Known for its rolling hills, the Palouse is known as one of the seven wonders of Washington state. It's also a major agricultural hub for producing wheat and legumes. But before we go sightseeing, we've got to stop and let the little one stretch his legs. <laughs> It's the midday heat and we're in Schmuck Park, which despite its name is pretty nice and Julian is playing over here. I know you're gonna start walking this weekend. This is a great playground in terms of just being really spread out so everyone can have their own little space. So I think it's actually also a disc golf course. So there's an activity for the adults to do as well. Here's one of the disc golf stations. Is disc golf a thing in other states or is it just our stakes? I feel like we have a decent amount of parks here that are dedicated to this. Or it's also a baby play station too. Supervised of course. The playground is a little dated. You can tell it's not brand new but that's okay because it was built during a time when things were built to last and so they are all very functional. The slides, the swings, all kinds of play structures like you can definitely play on them if you have some creativity or are a child. But if you notice we're in the shade and this is the secret mission of coming to this park because right now is the heat of the day and if you know anything about eastern Washington it's actually the opposite of western Washington where we live where it's always cool and breezy and so on and cloudy but here it's really strong sun so we're hiding in the shade. So far nothing. Uh. Ooh, <laughs> do you believe in ghosts? If you do, then you probably want to come visit the St. Ignatius Hospital here in Colfax. This is one of the only places that I knew to come and visit here in Colfax because it's made a bunch of those like Atlas Obscura lists, but it's an abandoned hospital. It was established in 1893 and it functioned up until 1964 when they ran out of money. And so as of then, up until 2000, it served as a senior living home and it's been abandoned ever since 2003, totally shut down. You can tell from the outside that it hasn't been really well taken care of, so it kind of gives it that haunted look. So the only way to get inside is to book a tour. We didn't do that because we have a baby and we don't want to bring him on a haunted, uh, haunted hospital tour, obviously, but it's something that could be pretty cool. There is apparently some paranormal activity if you believe in that kind of thing and if you want to do that particular tour. But yeah, this is here in Colfax, if that's something that interests you. Look what cute boy we found on top of the butte. We made it up to Steptoe Butte, which is one of the, if not the main highlight here to come see whenever you visit Palouse. Well, it's definitely the best view because it gives you a 360. It's like the tallest um, geographical formation here. It's kind of like a giant rock sticking out in the middle of this region called the Palouse. And it's really hard to get a view here because everything is like a rolling hill, it's low. So you can drive for hours and hours and you see how beautiful it is and you can never get a view unless you come here. They call them step toes because it's an isolated hill of older lava rock surrounded by newer lava rock. And this area is actually home to some of the oldest rock in Washington state. If you don't know, Washington state is one of the youngest land on the planet. You know, Hawaii is obviously newer and Japan and so on. but. 
uh, Washington is still on the Pacific Rim and it is one of the youngest. The whole American West Coast is actually much younger than the rest of North America. And apparently right here you can see the divide between the old part and the new part of the Washington state. So up here there's not a whole lot to do, which is our mistake. We got here a little bit too early. We actually wanted to be here for sunset, but that's about three hours away. There's just a parking lot and there actually used to be a hotel up here though, but they say it didn't survive very long because it didn't have a lot of visitors. So it eventually shut down because of that. And then the building burned down. So there's oh, wow. even no evidence of a hotel ever being here. <laughs> but can you imagine the views that you would have gotten if there had been a hotel here and you could actually stay here? I wish there was a hotel. I would have stayed here for mm -hmm. sure. Now we're kind of down in the valley um, this place is now about five hours away from Seattle that's why it's um, seldom visited I've wanted to come here for many years and it's the first time we make it PNG's back baby We're about to enjoy European cuisine, which for me hits home, and we're already very much enjoying the juice, which is squeezed in house, and the coffee, which also is sourced and roasted very well. So, foodie experience, but we are in the town of Pullman, which is on the very edge of Washington State, on the east next to Idaho famous for its agriculture, but also one of the top schools in the state. This is also my first proper French press coffee that I've had in over two years because I gave it up when I was pregnant with Julian and I've kind of been easing back into caffeine. I haven't wanted to dive super deep into it, but I just couldn't resist it because it sounded so good on the menu and it's been worth it. Every single sip has been so good. It was actually pretty fast. We've done it again, it's big. The hotcakes are just inside. <laughs> it's massive. This is the goulash, which looks different than any other goulash I've seen. It tastes like a breakfast mix. I feel like I got a bunch of like hash brown potatoes on that first bite. It's really not what I expected from a goulash. It's very different, yeah. And just the Abel skiver with apple sauce. <laughs> so Abel skivers are Danish and it's like a little pancake bowl of sorts. The pancake itself is almost salty, a little bit savory. So adding, oh, probably because of the cheese. And so when you add that applesauce, it gives it a little bit of sweetness, but it's not too much sweetness. So it still tastes really, really good. To distract Julian, we gave him a little piece of the hot cake. This is actually his very first pancake or hot cake that he's ever had. So we just drove from Pullman through Moscow, Idaho, and we've already left Palouse, it feels like almost. Um, it's a shared region between the two states, however, as soon as you cross here beyond Moscow, Idaho, it starts getting wooded. There's still lush meadows of grass all around, but you can see how it's starting to transition into more mountainous. You see the mountains in the distance and everything. So I think from here on, it will be a little different. After driving for hours through the Windows desktop, we finally made it to the woods in Idaho. This is one of the last towns on our route. You can see behind me here, there's a fork that way it goes to Coeur d'Alene, where we've gone many times. But the other way is Elk River, which is our final destination for this road trip. You see right here is the main road. It's a state road, basically a highway. But immediately off the main road begins the dirt road right there and we already see people getting around on ATVs and motorcycles and stuff like that, dirt bikes. So you know, this is Idaho, we're no longer on the coast, we're no longer in a metropolis. It's very, very rural, it's scenic and it's pristine. That's one of the things about Idaho. It's so clean and beautiful. We made it to our destination and to be expected, Julian fell asleep 10 minutes before death. And so we've been cruising around and went deep into the forest to let him sleep. Yeah, we're here to look for a giant cedar. So we're going to take this trail and see where it goes. Interestingly, they allegedly have a path for the stroller. So we're going to try it out and see. And I don't know if you can hear that, but there is already gunfire happening off in the distance. So we are clearly in another part of the USA. I see people strapped with their guns because there are bears here. Yeah, Julian can't contain himself. He's sitting upright in his stroller looking forward. And he just started pointing a lot on this trip. He's been pointing, you know, here and there, but these days it's like every few seconds he's like that, that, and he's even doing like double finger pointing sometimes. <laughs> so it's been pretty fun trying to explain what everything is that he's seeing. Yeah, he's pointing that way. What's that way? Trees. The forest. 
Look at how beautiful this is. Lush green and it smells really good, yeah. And the temperature, the humidity, everything is just perfect. If you're wondering why we're in Idaho, this is why. Actually, I had read about this cedar tree and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> Julian is so happy so here. Happy. I really am getting a kick out of being able to use a stroller in the forest like this. Yeah, this is a time of our life where we're appreciating all of these all-access trails that are for not only strollers, but also for wheelchairs. So it's really nice that people that can't walk can still access these trails. Yeah, you may make fun of it when you're in your 20s and you're like a rocket fast and capable, but there are parts of life that aren't like that and it's worth remembering. <laughs> <laughs> still some obstacles. But not impossible. And that tree is what I think may be the biggest cedar tree here. Well, it has to be the biggest because it says it's the biggest known that is inland. And I was going to say it's definitely smaller than what we have on the coast. We've seen them on another video. We filmed them actually right on the ocean. But this one is inland by what, six hours? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Crazy thing is it says it's over 3,000 years old, this tree right here that you're seeing. Wow, look at that. This tree is taller than a 16-story building and it's estimated to be about 3,000 years old. Julian is gonna get some of that big tree energy. And it's interesting because yesterday we went to a hospital which was allegedly haunted and I was like, I don't want to take him there. So let's take him to a 3,000-year-old giant tree instead. Uh, <laughs> Are you impressed? Uh, 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 uh. Time to check into our hotel here in Elk River and then explore downtown proper. It's 4th of July weekend so it's very busy. The key. Hmm. <laughs> Someone still hasn't checked out of this one. So that's pretty funny. They have everything, all the information and everything, but that someone just hasn't left. <laughs> and so they're trying to figure out who it is or where to put his baggage. And he'll hang out in town for an hour maybe and come back. So we noticed like. Um, I think it's kind of an open entry fire department barbecue, so we're about to check it out. Firefighter cheeseburger. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. We just checked on the local bar and it says open till close or whatever, 3 till close. And we asked them when they close, they said 2 a.m. So it's the happening place. What I find interesting is how there are people just all over simply camping, whatever they may. People are so friendly here. Yeah. They're all greeting us and they love our baby. They want to be on the vlog. Hey, nice. You got a gimbal. <laughs> <laughs> hit from the rain successfully and there's room for Julian to play so we're doing all right while it's raining. We still haven't made it into our room but we have made it into the common room of the lodge which has a kitchen, it has a little living room set up with a TV. Feels kind of like a hostel so far. Julian's practicing his standing here and he met his second dog. <coughs> yeah. Hi. Yeah. So we've met quite a few people just by hanging out in this common room of the, of the lodge and they're all really curious about why we're here in Elk River and they keep alluding to, oh your trip's gonna be really different, stay tuned and you know just see what happens. So we're really curious to see. Room is ready. So it sounds like those people that we just met are the ones that we were waiting for to check out. Looks like a pretty nice little rustic room. Pretty bare bones, but that's really all you need when you're here on vacation. The idea is to spend your time outside. Here 
are having our second dinner, <laughs> which is actually pretty good. It's a uh, prime rib sandwich with a full pork sandwich on the way. I really like the sandwich. They did the barbecue just right here, way in the mountain in Idaho. You can eat well. It's pretty interesting. And we found out there is a fireworks show tonight. That's why everybody's lining up all around. Uh, it starts when it gets dark. Well, we had a great barbecue dinner. Right now the fireworks are starting to go off. It's almost dark and the weather cooled down. I'm a little buzzing. These beers were strong. The shoots from Bend, but extra strong, I don't know why. This is the field here it's all happening at. Solid ATV, man. Hello. Nice fire. Yeah, that's the best fire so far. <laughs> wait, wait, wait! He's got it right back! <laughs> pretty sweet setup right here. Juju. <laughs> Juju. <laughs> <laughs> We're walking, it's getting dark, sunset is approaching. It's actually May have happened, I don't know, but that means the fireworks are about to start. We ultimately determined that the source of the fireworks show is a little bit too close for comfort uh, since Julian doesn't really have ear protection. So Martin's up with Julian. He's going to watch the fireworks show from the balcony of the hotel. But I'm going to go down to the base of where all the action is happening and I'll take you guys with me. place to sleep I swear I'm tired <laughs> <laughs> it's just really hot at night and there's this really noisy elevator <laughs> fan you can see how tired I am and <laughs> it's just hard either way with it on or off it's hard to sleep Julian wasn't having it therefore we can't sleep took until 4 a.m. to put him to sleep properly and then at 9 a.m. already the ATV start coming <laughs> So we've mm -hmm. had like five plus two hours, very tortured sleep. In case you're curious, here's what our room looks like after we unpack all of our stuff, including Julian's pack and play, which takes up a pretty big part of the room. Is it nap time? <laughs> I want a nap too, don't we all? Can I have a nap? <laughs> We managed to get out of bed and get to the coffee shop. It wasn't easy over here. <laughs> We're surrounded by dogs and kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, we fueled up on coffee and a breakfast sandwich at the cafe nearby, which was really cool. The owners were awesome. Gave us some great tips about where to go and a hike to do. So we're off to do a waterfall hike now. Wow, that is a serious thorn. Well, we made it to our hiking trail and so far it's actually nice and cool up here which is really appreciated because it is very hot back in the town where we started. And I'm wearing Julian on a backpack so it's 30 pounds. Not bad but not that good either. Can probably do 60 pounds and basically die but 30 is manageable for now we'll see for how long so this is a pretty popular trail uh, besides the big tree or big cedar trail this is the one that a lot of people do when they're up here and quite a few cars and we came in so the nice thing about that is that we shouldn't have to worry about bears or cougars because other people should have scared them off by now this backpack protects julian from cougars they can't snatch him Unlike the giant cedar trail yesterday, this one is not paved, but it's also not too bad. It's fairly flat, as in there's not a lot of roots or things on the trail, but there's a little bit of up-down so far. <laughs> Smiles. So far we saw a couple of signs at the beginning of the trail saying that at one time there was a forest school that was way out here back in like the early 1900s, but it's no longer here. It's kind of far from the town actually, so it's interesting that the school was so far in. And part of the trail was a wagon trail at one point, which is probably why the trail exists in the first place. The biggest reason we come to Idaho is because you get this in Idaho. You can be in nature without being crowded like in Washington on the coast, it's madness. Uh, even here you can come ski, there are no lines, you go to trails, there's no crowd, it's great. 
So we strolled downhill for a bit and it seems that we've come to the lookout point. That waterfall is Lower Falls. It's 50 feet tall and it empties into the North Fork of the Clearwater River. This nature is so great. It's you know partially overcast today, which really helps. So it's not extremely hot, but it's just so quiet and peaceful. You can hear the birds, you can hear the waterfall in the distance. So yeah, this is a really good choice for today. But now we made it to the Middle Falls Overlook. So we're gonna head now down a hill towards that one. Making our way to the upper falls which is the last waterfall to see on this trail and so far it is downhill but there are a lot more switchbacks which makes it a little bit easier going both down and up. <laughs> we just made it to the final waterfall and Julian fell asleep right then so now he's sleeping. He must be comfortable. Alright, our first successful waterfall hike with Julian inside of the carrier. Seems to be a success so far, even though we're not done yet. The best view of this waterfall is definitely down here. You gotta come down this little hill where you can touch the water and you get a really great shot of the upper falls from down here. The water's so warm, it's like bath water. It's like not even cold at all. So that was a really nice little spot down there, the upper falls lookout. Uh, I think that's the lowest part of this entire hike, so now we gotta go up to the parking lot where we started. Kind of following the Upper Falls River as we make our way back to the parking lot. It really opens up over here, not a lot of tree cover, so it's a little bit brighter and more direct sunlight, but it's real pretty. Get a pretty decent view of the falls from up here too. As you can see, this whole setup in this chair on the bed is actually working out pretty well and he's really enjoying his food. He's eating some grass-fed beef with sweet potato and kale. Sweet times with your baby. What do you have to say? When we got back, I noticed that the weather actually felt really cool here as opposed to yesterday, which was just oppressively hot. And coming into the room even, it felt like a sauna, but it's actually been nice and cool. And I looked outside as I was feeding Julian to see that the rain started. So it looks like we got back just in time. The rain is even worse. We got the coveted huckleberry ice cream, which there's always a line for this thing, so let's see how it tastes. Mmm, that's delicious. That's good, yeah. It's creamy, it's not too heavy, it's nice and light, and yeah, it's really good. I just hiked with 30 pounds on my back, so I keep earned it. We deserve this one. <laughs> yeah, it's hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're eating pretty interesting stuff here. <laughs> this is a huckleberry barbecue pizza, very saucy. And that's a German pizza with um, mustard sauce and kraut. So it's totally different than what you would normally expect in a pizza place. So the huckleberry is technically a flatbread, but it looks more or less like a pizza. And it actually tastes really good. At first I was like, is this going to taste like dessert? But it actually doesn't. The blackberry is there, but it's not overly sweet. And it gives it, I don't know, just like a nice kind of tart flavor. And there's actually meat and cheese and this is actually really good. Oh, we just tried this kraut pizza and it's actually really good too. Kind of surprising, but it does indeed taste like kraut and <laughs> sausage and pizza all at the same time. So I, I like this. It's a white sauce pizza. It's almost creative back there in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were a bunch of other pizzas actually and this is just two of at least <laughs> 10, I think they're on the menu and they were all pretty creative, so. Tom's Tavern in Elk River, Idaho. Great place for pizza, it turns out. Don't really have any uh, internet here. We're having to go off of paper maps, which is actually pretty fun. 
Old school. Like the old way of navigating, and so far it's working out pretty well for us. <laughs> We came out to do one more hike today. One of the ladies at the cafe recommended doing this one. So we don't really know anything about it other than the fact that it's called the Perkins Cedar Grove Trail number 749. And unlike the waterfall hike this morning, it's obviously not very popular. We're the only ones out here, us and mosquitoes. There's plenty of them. And so this is actually a time when we have to be a little bit cautious about cougars or even bears because there's no one else around here to scare them off. So right off the bat, this trail is already pretty wild and overgrown. Definitely not as paved and clear cut as the other ones that we've been on so far. We unfortunately didn't bring any bug spray or actually we bought some, but I don't know where it went. <laughs> oh man, yeah, we totally bought some. But yeah, our only recourse against mosquitoes is to just keep moving and hope that they leave us alone and yet we don't really know the objective here it's just a grove of cedars so we may not need to go very far it's really funny hiking with julian on my back because when he shakes up a little he starts giggling right over my ears Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> <See? laughs> Oh wow, this is cool. So you can definitely see the vibes of the old growth forest, which is very diverse and very lush. Susie so asked me what's an old growth forest, which I think she knows. But for the viewer's sake, it's a forest which has never been cut. And almost all the forests in the world, especially Europe and Asia, have been cut down and regrown. But in America, there are some that are from the way they were. And that's pretty cool. And this one is one of them. Which is why we came hiking here. Really beautiful undergrowth in these old growth forests always. It's one way you can tell them. They're a lot less uniform, more diverse. How's it going, Julian? <laughs> <laughs> wow, creeks are running under us. Yeah, that's so cool. Ooh, obstacle. Luckily there is a way. <laughs> Past the obstacle. It's pretty cool hiking with her boy. So at the beginning of this trail there was really no information. We didn't have any idea how long it was or anything, but a little bit inwards there's a little sign. It says it's about a half mile long loop. It also says that the forest was saved from being harmed in the 1920s. So it's been officially untouched ever since then, but actually prior to then. These ferns are so soft, they feel like feathers as they're like going by your legs. <laughs> <laughs> smells good. <laughs> if you've never been to a mountain town before, one of the best parts is the air quality. It's just some of the best air that you're ever gonna find. The other thing about the mountain air being so nice is that our allergies disappear when we come up here. They're so bad when we're down in like the valley, but here, it's just pristine. Julian thinks it's really amusing when I chase <laughs> mosquitoes from my ear. <laughs> I am a little biased, but I do think that's the cutest laugh I've ever heard. And just like that, we emerge and we're done with that trail. Half mile goes by really fast. <laughs> mosquitoes. Assholes. <laughs> <laughs> So mission accomplished here in Elk River, part of what motivated this trip was this forest that we just hiked in, old growth cedar forest, and we wanted to try out how we can hike with Julian on our backs, and it worked, it was great, and we are now kind of rebuilding the range of how much we can hike. We didn't know this was a hotspot for 4th of July or anything like that. Yeah, we told the coffee people this morning that, that, oh, we just, you know, really wanted to check out the nature here. I didn't even know it was 4th of July. And they were like, oh, you must have had a big surprise then that it was so busy. <laughs> yeah. And it was definitely busier on Friday and Saturday. Today has been a lot more low key. So I'm kind of glad that we came in yesterday because we did get a little glimpse of just how crazy it gets. And it's not super crazy, no. by the way. It wasn't, you know, really that intense, but it was nice to see that many people around all enjoying themselves. Everyone was super friendly. We've met tons of people out here and it's just been a really great trip, as it always is, every time we come to Idaho. Behold the spread. 
We went from deep in Idaho to Mexico, basically. So the town of Othello is practically Mexican. Every business around here feels like it's catered towards Mexicans. And we found one taco tr truck that was actually open today. It's the only place open on 4th of July. So we loaded up on tacos. We got 16 tacos <laughs> of all kinds. We got lengua, pastor, asada, and birria. So far the pastor is proper. Well, Julian was winding down s below us. So we brought him up and gave him some meat. I think you actually gave him lengua. Yeah, beef <laughs> tongue. Like it? Turns out there's a 4th of July party on the back of our hotel pretty much in the park so we're gonna go see what it's like. Do not expect anything like this here. This is a way bigger party than the one that we had over in Elk River. Lots <laughs> more people. It is a bigger city. <laughs> Looks good to me. Nice. Yes, I'm getting pina colada <laughs> As you can see we really were not kidding that this city is Mexican Look, Quesadillas and tacos, we could have gotten our tacos here Pretty funny place to end up on the 4th of July, right? <laughs> this is going to be our second 4th of July celebration Yeah, <laughs> the first one was very white American and this one is very very Mexican We have a lost little boy, he looks from the He's not mine. I already got too many of these. This is a serious party. This is bigger than most American 4th of July parties <laughs> that we've seen. Well, at least in a town of this size. Yeah. It's a huge party for a town that's under 10,000 people. The entire town is here, basically. Yeah. It's your first Mexican party, baby. <laughs> Seeing her son walk through the party like a boss really gives me a kick. Here's something interesting to mention. We just came across a family that was a mixed couple, a white woman and a Mexican man. And the boys were mixed, obviously. And they both had shirts that said all American boy. <laughs> so that tells you how America works these days. Well, Julian is also that way. Both of us are not born here, but Julian is. He's more American than either of us are. That's right. Yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> this is the last day of our road trip and we're heading back to Seattle. But before that, we're stopping by a place called Ironworks for breakfast, or rather brunch, because breakfast is over apparently. But yeah, this is a really cool place we drove by yesterday. They were closed, but today they're open, and it looks pretty interesting. It's a departure from the other Mexican-style restaurants that we've seen, so pretty nice to try something different. We even have a little stack of clothing here, which I'm assuming is just for decoration, but it's kind of a, a tribute to all the farm workers that work out here and lots of antiques lining the shelves. So an interesting thing about the town of Othello is that it was a town that was very much in decline up until the 1950s when the Columbia Basin Project began. The Columbia Basin Project is actually quite phenomenal because it's the biggest irrigation project in the USA or in the world from what I can tell. The water comes all the way from the Canadian Rockies and goes through the desert in Washington and here in the desert they pull that water out and have turned seriously thousands and thousands of square miles into very good um, irrigated farmland and made our state into an agricultural powerhouse. We have really no concern about having food in this state because of that. And that's why out here, you know, it looks like dry desert everywhere, but they actually do have a blueberry you pick farm <laughs> in this area and it's because of that project. Well, we got sandwiches for lunch. That's the beef panini. Mm, it has cheese and apple in it. It's nice. nice. And I've got the regular roast beef sandwich, or the traditional cold roast beef sandwich. Delicious. Well, I found out a little bit more about this ironworks place. So it was established in 1910 originally as a welding shop, and it was that way up until about the late 90s. 
and then it sat empty for about 15 years before it was turned into this cafe and marketplace that it is today. But I think it's really cool that they were able to retain some of that original character of the original welding shop and keep a tribute to it so that people that walk in do wonder about, hey, what was this place before? And they can still enjoy food from today.